What's going on guys? So today I am out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and you are in for one heck of a treat because this has such a different floor plan to it than you're probably expecting for a super compact travel trailer. We're gonna take a closer look at this thing because I think it's gonna blow you away. Guys, hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, before we kick things off, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 3,995 pounds. It's gonna have a cargo capacity, really low cargo capacity of 687 pounds. Now, from a cargo capacity perspective, that is extremely low. But depending on how you load this up, you're gonna also wanna be kind of cautious of you know, how much you put in it while you're traveling versus when it's set up at an RV park because those are two different weights, right? You can easily stay under the 687 pounds in terms of cargo, but this also accounts for people. So whenever you're set up at a campground, I think you'll be fine. Just be careful, again, on how much you pack into this. And you'll see why this has a relatively low cargo capacity when you see how much they've crammed into this unit. Now this has a single 4,000 pound rated axle, which actually exceeds the gross vehicle weight rating. So I know a lot of people are gonna really appreciate that. And they are D-rated tires. So we're gonna walk around the outside here and then make our way inside so you can see what this thing is all about from the interior. Then we'll come back out. So it's got the Lippard solid step down here. This is the 162 RBU Viking travel trailer. And again, I think you're really gonna like this thing. All right, hopping inside, you'll probably be able to tell right off the bat what makes this thing so unique in terms of being a compact travel trailer. Check this out. So this is a Murphy bed up front. Right now it's set up in like this wraparound sofa, kind of a dinette type setup. And I'm sure there could be a table here somewhere so you can actually set it up right in the middle. But you have the Murphy bed right here. So once the Murphy bed drops down, you have a queen size bed which kind of lays on top of this. But this is also kind of cool in its configuration because it gives you a very, very interesting seating configuration for a type of travel trailer that we're in. Now you have small windows on each side. I feel like they probably could have gone with some larger windows right here. You have your standard pleated uh, blinds right here. And then you have a decorative wallboard right in this area which transitions to more of a standard wallboard speaker up top a couple led lights but this is really the standout feature of this travel trailer you rarely get this type and this much cabinetry inside of a travel trailer of this size especially in the price point that this one's in so it's really cool to see that you're starting to get more and better cabinetry in these smaller travel trailers. But that's really cool. You got this little opening here. You can throw your TV back here. If you don't have a TV, you could throw a coffee maker back there. You have a little spot right here for storage. Plus you have additional storage right here and more storage below. This is a stick and tin unit, by the way. I forgot to mention that, but I'm sure I'll mention it again when we're outside. More storage up top. You have your thermostat right here, power plus USB. Underneath here, Looks like you have some storage. You do. So you have access to your storage from below here as well, which is nice. And in the center, uh, I don't think you have access there. But yep, that panel actually moves. So you could probably open that up as well and get to that front pass-through storage, which I think is really convenient. Especially if you need to get something, you don't always have to go outside if it's something you might use inside of the RV. You have your single, this is probably an eight or a 10,000 BTU air conditioning system. We might find out here in a second when we look at the paperwork. Here's your kitchenette area. Looks like one of the cabinets may have dislodged when it was in travel. The screws look like they just backed out right here, but they'll get that fixed up for you if you look at this unit. And again, this may not represent every unit out there, right? So could have hit a big bump or something. Coming over here, you have your thermofoil countertop. And thermofoil is essentially wood with kind of this waterproof uh, water impervious top on top so it replicates or kind of emulates a solid surface countertop as long as you don't get the bottom of it soaked plastic sink basin you have a nice upgraded and it's a uh, so that's a metal little faucet you got up here two burner gas cooktop got additional storage underneath and then additional storage right here on this side it's like you have a huge pantry. You do. 
This can also double as a closet if you want it to. They probably should have put some removable shelves in here. That would have been really nice. A lot more storage. This is the table for the dinette area when it's in that configuration. More storage down here. Let's take a look at the price since it's right here. It has an MSRP of $33,716. Sale price of $24,999. 2022 Viking 162 RBU. Everchill 12 volt refrigerator, and it's a pretty good size refrigerator in here as well. And you got your freezer up top. Very cool. Again, becoming more and more popular. Before Everchill kind of introduced the 12 volt refrigerator to the RV industry, it was likely that this would have been a gas electric refrigerator. So I really like seeing this, especially if you throw a good solar setup and some upgraded batteries, you can really have an extended time out with a refrigerator like this without worrying about draining your batteries. All right, coming into the restroom, it is a full-size restroom, and it's actually an oversized restroom for a travel trailer this size. And that's kind of the theme here. You're getting a lot in this unit for the price. So it has a full-size rear bathroom with tons and tons of countertop space here. Plus you have huge amount of storage back here as well. I mean, this is just a very, very well laid out travel trailer gonna have a plastic toilet here has a reasonable size shower for a unit this small and they actually put a shower surround in it so a lot of your ultra low cost units or your smaller more entry-level units may not even give you a shower surround inside of the shower and you get that on this one which is nice you have your vent above it graystone microwave which I didn't show you earlier and then you have your vent hood above your stove which gives me an opportunity to show you the vent hood opening on the outside right here which needs to be opened if you're going to be running your vent hood because if you don't do it you're just going to be recirculating all that air inside of your rv very cool let's hop outside and see what the outside of this unit's all about all right starting from the front working our way back again this is a stick and tin unit it is aluminum siding on a wood wall frame over a steel mainframe has a manual front tongue jack something you could easily upgrade make yourself feel good about putting a little higher end component that gives you more convenience on here 20 pound propane can up front nice steel rails here we'll be able to support probably two batteries it is prepped for solar and this solar is mainly meant to trickle charge the batteries so if you keep this in storage in your driveway and you're worried about your batteries dying you can plug in some solar panels here and it will just provide a constant stream at least when it's sunny outside to your batteries to keep them updated and charged led lighting it's going to be one side of your pass-through storage and again all of this is accessible from the inside if you remove those boards up top tons of storage your 30 amp cable is right there Coming around this way, it has the Edge 12 volt powered awning. Lippard solid step, aluminum folding steps. Door does not have a window on it. Would have been nice to see one there. You have some external speakers, another window. You have a 110 outlet right here. Then you have standard leaf sprung suspension over here. This looks like it's on a BAL frame as well. This is not the standard Lippert I beam frame basically uses bolts and welding for everything. Tires on this unit are your Castle Rock tires. Coming back, you have a D-ring that's been attached to the side. They call it a leash link. It's nice that they put it there, but it's a standard D-link. You can simply pick one of those up at Home Depot for about $5 and put one on your RV. Just make sure you have a backer that it's going into and you don't just drill it into the wall. And make sure there's nothing behind the wall that you drill it into. 4-inch tubular bumper, scissor jack, stabilizing jacks all around, outside shower. There are LED lights on the side, and these are LED lights as well. Up top, all LED lights. It is wired for Furion wireless backup camera. Coming around this side, outside of your water heater. More LED lights outside of your furnace. 30 amp connection, cable satellite, city water connection. And this is the other side of your pass-through storage. Again, a lot of storage in this unit. I like how easily it is to access from the inside. Very, very cool. 
from a towability perspective, you know, this thing is pretty lightweight. Again, the gross vehicle weight rating of this unit is 4,000 pounds. You know, what you can actually tow this with, you could get away towing this with a lot of different vehicles so long as they are equipped with, I would probably say six to 7,000 pounds worth of tow capacity. This is certainly wider than most of your travel trailers. It actually appears to be on a wide frame, uh, which is really nice because it's gonna give you more of that interior space. And that's certainly one of the reasons why the price is higher than what you might typically think. Yep, BAL frame right there. Um, but from, again, a towability perspective, this is something I would probably tow with your typical half-ton truck. Doesn't necessarily need to be a max tow package, but a half-ton truck would be able to handle the width, the length, and the height of this unit better than most other vehicles. You could get this behind some of your larger SUVs, but again, it's not necessarily the weight in terms of hitch weight or overall weight, it's more the profile, just how long, tall, and wide this unit is. And that's gonna have a very, very Im big impact on what you're towing this RV with. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.